the enemy of my enemy is my friend on Facebook. Like this post. I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome to another episode of Books and Beer, our weekly flight among the indie publishing clouds. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and our topic today is authors on Facebook. Should they spend any time on that tiny little site at all? And if they do, how do they spend it effectively? So let us begin with beer. Eva, what are you drinking this evening? So I'm drinking the hair I used to have back when I was seven. Uh, this is the Elysian Super Fuzz Blood Orange Pale. Um, brought back from a friend of mine from the Seattle area. Uh, it's a nice little refreshing uh, blood orange pale ale with the fuzz fro. Just a reminder, we brought back three beers from Seattle as well, so whenever you can work it into your busy schedule, we need to imbibe. Yeah, Bill age. Okay, fine. You're too busy for beer, then something's just wrong in the world. <laughs> so I don't have a bottle. I'm drinking a uh, one of our black IPAs, a black eye IPA that we brewed last year. Was not sure it was going to be good. It came out of the bottle with a bit of a purpose behind it, but tastes just fine. So... Excellent. Well, that will do it for the beer portion of the show. Let us jump right into the books, shall we? So it's a little bit of a <clears throat> perhaps sacrilegious statement to be talking about Facebook here on Google+. But I thought it fitting since all those people who invested in Facebook finally made like a dollar and ten cents today. Yay! It finally went over its share price just from its original IPO offering. Um, there is that, and then there's the fact that Jeff wrote a book about it last, published it last week, and so we thought we would dive into Facebook because it's something that authors shouldn't, you know, ignore. We would definitely would not recommend that. But Jeff, I want to ask you some questions here about this one. Um, the first one being, well, I don't want to ask you why should an author be on Facebook, and the answer to that one is quite simple. Uh, 1.15 billion people, I believe, is the newest number on that one. But I guess my better question for you is, what should they do while they are there? Well, so the, I'm going to embellish a little bit on the number, because it is gigantic and staggering all by itself. But there's been a survey going around that talks about um, where people go to get information, where readers go. And the number one site, the number one place that readers go for information on authors was Facebook, followed up very closely by author pages. When they said, where do you go to find information on books, it was Facebook and professional sites like Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble. So that's where readers are going to look. The fact that there's a billion people there is great, but it's the intent that really makes it a valuable place to be. So what should they be doing? Um, well, so because there's readers going there looking for information on books and authors, beyond just going social, authors really need to be conveying information on who they are, what their genre is. They need to be interacting and building a fan base. I would assume that the people who are going there, who answered that survey and said that Facebook is the number one spot for me to go, look for authors, look for books. It's not the same thing as going to a bookstore and looking for a book. It's probably not the same, they don't exhibit the same behaviors as someone who goes to, for example, Amazon.com and looks for a book. They're probably doing something different, like trying to figure out what their friends are reading, um, what uh, what's popular in the social sphere right now, and also I would I would posit to find out if they could make a connection with an author. Am I on base? Do you agree with those three things? I would agree with all of your positing previously aforementioned in the paragraph hence or forthwith. So people, you know, Facebook is all about recommendations. It's about the liking and the friends and, and you want rather than to browse a website or you know, to to just kind of look for something new to read, you're going to ask people whose opinion you like and respect what they're enjoying. You know, when the last Game of Thrones book came out, uh, every book form that I was in had people filling it up. Okay, I've read the latest book. What's something like this that I should go read? 
So it's all about those recommendations. I mean, people, you know, get a recommendation on Facebook, and they want to learn a little bit more about that author. Having a engaged, active presence there is what readers are looking for to say, hey, well, this is really somebody that I would want to pick up and spend some money on. Yeah, I, I think that's the key point is that it is a recommendation engine. It is not necessarily a place they go to discover a book, they get it from, from other sorts of people. And it's not a stretch to assume that once someone has received that recommendation, they're going to research and find that is that really the book for them. And if the author is right there and handy, on Facebook, they, they might as well, uh, well, that would be a good thing to help boost someone going into them. So this makes good sense for me for brand new authors to Facebook, but if you've been doing it for a while and you've been interacting with your the friends you went to high school with and your crazy aunt, um, how, how do you make the switch from just hanging out on Facebook, playing Farmville all day, to actually becoming a little more serious about it as an author? Well, I want to touch on something you kind of worked in there that I really agree with, and that Facebook does provide more benefits to indie authors for you know authors just getting started out. Stephen King can get by just fine without being on Facebook. It's not really going to dent his sales at all. But for connecting with someone where you say, "Wow, this is really somebody you know I've never heard of before. I want to learn a little bit more about them." That's where the payoff is. So to your question. If an author has, they're on Facebook, they've got a page, or excuse me, their profile, where they have all of their friends and their likes and they play their Farmville games. Although I'd argue if you play Farmville, you're not going to have success as an author or pretty much anything else until you stop doing that. Plus one. Yes. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Uh, but what you can do is set up a page. Set up a separate entity where you, and there's about a half dozen different ways to model this and set it up, whether you use followers or whatever, but the cleanest, easiest, simplest way is to set up a standalone page, put your author presence there, and then lock down your own profile in whatever way that you feel comfortable. So you can still interact and use it as an individual, but you have basically your business up there, assuming as an author you are treating it like a business. So you're setting up yourself as a Facebook page. You're not yes. dumping your Facebook profile, but you're changing the way you behave. You're still conversing with your friends from high school. You're still dealing with your crazy aunt as your Facebook profile. But as an author, you're more interacting with your fans as your page. That's That seems pretty solid uh, advice. And I know we talk about that in, in at length um, in, in your book. Is, is it the same for a brand new author? If someone has not been on Facebook before, has been reticent to join, or is it reluctant? I think reticent means you have to do something in type. Regardless, um, should they still follow the same advice, or should they just go ahead and start with a profile and just be professional from the get-go? Uh, I think it, it, at that point it really becomes situational. My default recommendation is to set up the fan page and drive everyone to that one single location. Because if you get it entangled in your profile, profiles have a 5,000 person cap limit. You don't get the metrics and other information you get off of a page. And it gets a lot more complicated. I know several authors who started with a personal profile. And then once they grew and wanted to migrate off to a page, they found themselves in a whole mess. So if you're starting out, there might be a couple different ways to look at it. You might decide to just show up and be a professional author from the get-go. I'd still probably recommend a page. You'll probably uh, be glad you made that decision in the long run. Yeah, I think it'll, it allows for a lot more flexibility if you decide that Facebook is a place where you want to behave more like a Facebook person and, and interact with those friends and family because they'll find you. Holy crap, will they find you? There is oh, yeah. no way. There is no way to escape your past even if you have changed your name. You may not escape your past. Anyhow, um, moving to the next section there. So let's say that I'm an author who perhaps I have found success somewhere else. Uh, I'm, I'm huge on LinkedIn. I've been building a Twitter following <laughs> for the longest time. Uh, I really went crazy on Goodreads or Wattpad or, sure, Google Plus, any of those other networks. Um, 
should I shut them down and recognize that, wow, if everyone, and I'm being superlative on purpose here, if everyone goes to Facebook to find new authors, why am I wasting time with these places? I'll just shut them down, move to Facebook. Good strategy? No. Uh, bad strategy for the same reason it's a bad strategy to just publish on one marketplace like Amazon. Different people are looking in different places. Uh, when that percentage of people who go to Facebook looking for an author was first was 60 some percent. So it's still the leader, but you got 40 percent of the people you're going to be losing if they're, if they're somewhere else. If you have an effective strategy on Goodreads, hey, be active there and share your work there on your Facebook page. If you're you know, active on Twitter, uh, find a way to post that information in a little bit more verbose manner on your Facebook page. I'm not a fan of just posting your tweets on your page. And if you're really big on LinkedIn, I don't know how you did that, because I've never actually heard anyone say those words to me. So that'd be pretty impressive. I'm huge on the LinkedIn. Yeah, so use, use your page as an aggregator of all the other great places that you have out there. I mean, really, anytime you're in social with this stuff, you need to be reusing your content and having different discussions with people who favor those different arenas. Don't just throw one thing out there and broadcast it to every single site. Excellent advice. Let's wrap things up with your top three things to be totally fantastic or fabulous, as someone might say, on Facebook as an author. What should you do? Fabulous. Well, first thing, promote yourself as an author. Don't make a fan page for your each book. Don't make a fan page for your characters. Uh, you have to be just ridiculously large to make that work that anyone's going to, you know, yeah, someone's going to be a fan of Darth Vader's fan page, but probably not your characters. So make your page just for yourself as an author. Put all of your work into that. Two, make engaging content. Don't just broadcast something and assume people are going to uh, like it and interact. Make it something that people are going to want to comment on. Make it personal. Make it engaging. Talk about your work. And when people respond, thank them. Reply to them. Start a discussion. That's how you're going to build fans. And the third thing I would probably say, don't pimp. And this is probably the same for any single social site. If you just get up there and do buy my book, buy my book, you share a book buying event because your book's going on sale next Tuesday at noon, uh, you're going to attract absolutely nobody to your page. So be engaging, don't pimp. Fantastic. Advice, my friend. Thank you. I will wrap it by saying, um, if you are looking to Jeff or I as examples of how to be good authors on Facebook, yeah, don't try and follow us. We have uh, advanced ninja-like stupidity skills that you probably would not want to uh, replicate. But regardless, um, we are definitely there, and you may connect with us on that site as well. So, Jeff, thanks for the information, my friend. My pleasure. Thanks for and having me on the show. Oh, wait. oh you're but very it was still good. a lot of fun. Maybe we should do this, you know, each week or something like that. Um, for those of you out there who got great information out of this and want more, 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 why you can get more, more, more in Jeff's new book, Creating Fabulous Facebook Pages and Modern Indie Author's Guide. It's available every single online marketplace, and I will link to it in our show notes over at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help authors cut through the complexity of indie publishing. Sound like interesting stuff? Well, there's more information at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show. And now, because we had so many great questions in the hangover portion of the show, we're going to continue this episode so you can hear them. If you appreciate this, feel free to send us money. Carl, thank you for figuring out the questions app. Welcome to the beta world of Google+. Plus. As we talk about Facebook, yes, indeed, we are crossing the streams. Carl's question is, is paid advertising your page worth it to gain readers to follow your page? Hmm, I love an advertising question because I don't deal with them all day at work long enough. Um, let me try and answer the question for you. So there is a place for paid advertising for some authors at, at some point. It's rarely the first suggestion that I make 
to them. Paid advertising has a role to play in various stages of the, I'm sorry, customer lifecycle, the, the conversion funnel, if you will. Um, and getting people to your Facebook page can be uh, something that is worthwhile for you to advertise. Facebook has some very novel and, in all honesty, quite interesting ways that you can pay them money to boost the posts that you make on Facebook or actually to gain more readers. But I would do it to boost your posts more than I would do it to gain additional likes, for example, which is really what you're trying to do. If you are really good at creating fantastic content, um, and that's going to mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But if you have created a post that is wonderful and it's getting some good engagement and it's more than buy my book, it's on Silver 599, it's a great infographic, you've got a video that's really pumped up with it and you want to share it on Facebook, then it may be worth it. I'm not saying it is worth it, but it may be worth it to put some advertising dollars on that one to actually increase the visibility of that particular post larger than your own share of uh, Facebook follower, Facebook fans. Many of them will in turn like at least your content, if not you, and, and come back for more. So there is a, a, a rational use for it, but it really, really starts with creating great content. Anything to add, Jeff? I agree with a possible few, I guess, maybe not exceptions, but details in there. So promoting posts is great if it is a specific post that somebody who isn't already a fan would care Correct. About. Yeah, if you want it's, to put on your fans. Yeah, so if it's something that just, you know, wow, I'm almost I'm in the home stretch for my second book, blah, 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 and your existing fans are going to love that. They're going to know what you're talking about. They're going to engage. Somebody new, you're wasting your money on that. Where you might want to promote your page is if you really have a good feel for who would be interested in you as an author. An honest feel. So for example, let's say you had one of the three or four series that is really getting recommended when people finish Game of Thrones, like, wow, I want something more like this. Well, going out and just saying, hey, here's a new book series to read may not get you a lot, but being able to target Games of Thrones fans mm -hmm. and saying, hey, if you like this, check me out. If you're confident they'll really show up, that might be a good way to bring in new readers. So I think a balance of targeting content and you know, I, don't, I would personally try and a couple ads to bring in fans. But you have to have a real honest assessment of what somebody new coming to your page is going to like to make sure you target it properly. Yeah, I, that, that's great advice. And, and the nice thing about this, Carl, and everyone else listening to us as we, or watching us as we say this, is Facebook makes it really easy to spend little sums of money and I'm talking, you know, dollars, dozens of dollars, um, and you can you can do some some good news there. You're probably not at the thousands of dollars a day level. Most uh, authors that are listening to our show, at least, typically are not doing that unless you've got some serious backing, and, and that seems like a lot. But there's nothing wrong with if if you've got twenty-five dollars a day for a week to spend to, as Jeff says, if you know your target audience is a Game of Thrones. Um, because you are writing something that is very similar to that, and you you are all about that, then why not? Facebook allows for some real great targeting options, as well as the ability to spend really small levels of money to gain new followers and readers. I I think it's a a great idea if you have the money to spend. So thanks for the question, Carl. Our very first questions, and anybody should see the questions app if you're on our Google Plus page, you should see a questions, big green button that says, ask a question, and you can you can do that. And, and some people, like Carl Sinclair, can also figure out how to join actually the program today. Good evening, Carl. Hello. Enjoyed the show. Thanks for the answer. Sure. Last two minutes since we have um, given you that feedback, have you run the ads? Um, not in the last two minutes, I have Yeah, so the digital author in the 21st century needs to be, you know, just moving constantly. You can't be waiting, you know, it's time's flying here. So. I'll just go do that right now. Hold All on. right. Multitasking. Done. Okay. So we've got another question from Lynn Jordan. It is not on the screen yet. Did you select it? I did. Did you do, has it been 45 seconds yet? 
I guess that's no. Google and YouTube both um, lag significantly with comments and stuff. Yeah, there's always a 45-second lag with comments, which is weird because Rapid Fire was working earlier. I'll let you know as soon as it actually shows up on the screen, Jeff, but I don't see anything. Well, it's amazing because I can, you know, type some ridiculously long string into my browser, and it'll pull back, you know, riff through billions of links to build (laughs) it on the fly. And I have to click select and wait 45 seconds for Lynn Jordan's question to appear. Different apartment. You know what? Let's not wait anymore. It could be me. Ask the question. May I? You may. Okay. I still don't see it. Is it best to direct the ad to your page or to Amazon directly? Yeah. Hmm. Well, here's the deal. Um, You may not be able to direct the ad to Amazon directly. Many sites, and I'm, I've never tried this on Facebook, so feel feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but on Google, for example, you can't do that um, because you don't own the page. You do not own Amazon.com. You actually have to be an owner of that particular domain to send an ad directly there. So that can be kind of a challenge, but um, I would I, that's one challenge. But to answer the question, no, social media sites <laughs> are not a place to try and sell your book. Social media sites are a, try, a place to try and build and gain an audience. You will not build and gain an audience by saying, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. Have you not been listening? No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, do not do not try and send them straight to Amazon.com. Show them who you are as an author. Build that relationship and hope that they will. And no, no, don't hope. Continue to build great content so they can't help but buy your book when it's time. Well, the other thing, too, so even the answer, and Lynn, you, you didn't notice, you hit one of Evo's many pet peeves. Um, but the answer is really no from any which angle you want to slice this. Look at the size of the ad. Facebook gives you, I don't know, 100 characters. There's a little tiny little thing in there. 135 if somebody, characters. 100, if you, if somebody has never heard your book before, never heard of you, right, and, and this is going to pop up on their page, what are you really going to be able to tell them off on the side that's going to sell them or get them to click through? You're going to have a much better time engaging them in a community where they're going to come in and see what's going on and then learn about your book where they're going to see people talking about it, see pictures, see all this other information. And then if they're interested, they're going to go on and buy your book. So I just don't think it's an effective ad for a cold sell. Um, I don't personally. Um, I think you're, you know, to Evo's point, um, you know, I'm not sure if you can link off directly. I've never, I haven't tried it because it's just such a bad idea in other ways. Set up a good page and bring people there. But um, thank you for the question. I've never ever, I've never ever, in all the years I've been on Facebook, clicked on an advert on Facebook. So. Well, the, the reality is uh, 99.9% of the time, nobody will click on it. But it's the, the big numbers game, right? Eventually, once you, that 99.9% is great for 100 people, no one does it. But when you start getting to thousands and hundreds of thousands of millions, then that 0. 0.1, 0.2% can actually add up to a sizable number. <laughs> it's what keeps the lights on in this place. Um, so, yeah, I, I love the people that waste their money on advertising. I try and get them to not, but they keep doing Doing it and keep spending money with me, which is like, okay, I'll be all right. We got a question on, on on Twitter. Did you notice it, Jeff? I did not. I haven't looked at Twitter for this because nobody asks, though. But yeah. So, um, so read it, and I will sit here for 45 seconds. Yeah, I will. I will try and figure this out because, of course, it's Twitter, which means there's got to be like three different redirects in the middle of it too. So Chrissy Moss and Indie by Night and me and you. One of these people, I wondered what you thought about the issues about Facebook using fake likes and followers to earn more money. Oh, Facebook fraud, Jeff. Do you want that one or do you want me to go off? Uh, if you go off, we'll be here all night. Um, so it, anytime you are going to have uh, any kind of advertising or ways that people can make money, um, you are going to have somebody scamming it. There's people who try junk on Google. There's people who try junk on Facebook. Yeah, there's a lot of dead accounts on Facebook. There's a lot of uh, uh, garbage out there. But there's also a lot of real people. And worrying about that minority for 
all the other effective communication that goes on, I think it's a waste of time personally. Yeah, short, short answer for me on that one is um, fraudulent clicks happen on every single network. And every single network is concerned about them and doing their best to reduce them. Because it's not you that they are concerned about. It is me who they are concerned about. And when I say me, I'm saying me as the guy who works in advertising that oversees some stupid number like $25 million annually of media dollars. They want to make sure that I am satisfied with their ability to keep the click fraud as low as possible so that I feel good recommending it to my clients. So short answer, wouldn't worry about it too much. And if you are worried about it, then you probably shouldn't be advertising. Anyhow, go make great content and or write another book. So we have to ask a bad question. Sure. Yeah, actually, I wanted to make sure you got one in. You joined, and then we've been yammering, and sorry about that. I was just going to ask a question about beer instead of books, if that's okay. We like you. Go. Well, I'm in, uh, I'm in Australia, so um, it's 9.30 in the morning. Otherwise, I probably would be having a beer with you. Um, you um, but would, noon you somewhere. Know, would, would you judge our newfound friend if he was drinking at 9.30 in the morning? Because I... I I thought everyone in Australia had to drink by at least like 8, 8.15. Well, I only stopped at 7, so there's, been like a, <laughs> there's like a two hour turnaround where you're not allowed to drink. Um, nice. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Continue. There's nine. I've been watching your, um, your back issues of uh, all the podcasts for a while, um, and you have drunk quite a lot of beers that I, that I like as well, but do you have any Australian beers um, or IPAs? Um, that you guys have drunk or are fans of, or can I recommend one to you if you can possibly get it? Yes, yes, please uh, recommend one. So um, last last night, no, last time, last time on the show, um, I think it was last time. Shit, I didn't remember when it actually was. I had one from that that small country to the uh, east that you guys wanted to talk about, where they do the things bad to the sheep, right? We don't talk about New those Zealand. guys. Yeah, that, actually, I was actually born there. So oh, well, then you don't mind me talking about New Zealand. So I have, I have many Australian friends, and they all universally hate New Zealand. I don't know what it is. Most like it's U.S. and Canada. It's a very similar thing. So I had a beer from really New Zealand, which was quite tasty. Eight Wired was the name of that. Unfortunately, my Australian beer um, experiences have all been subpar. A, a very good friend of mine, Philip from Australia um, has been known. Uh, he, he comes to to America every so often and, and stays with me for a few days. And way back in early in our relationship, he actually sent me a, a significant quantity of beer. And he's not a beer drinker, so he went down to his local beer store and he said, "I would like to buy two cases of the most popular beer you have." And so I got a lot of Coopers or Coops or whatever it was actually. Yeah. yeah. I, none, of, none of it was good. It was it was just very unfortunate. So it might be popular, but it's something not good. I should try. If there's something that we should try and find to get, or if we need to, ex, you know, exchange some sort of, you know, uh, cross uh, equatorial beer exchange, then let's uh, let's let's have a conversation. Well, I live in um, in Perth, which is in the western um, part of Australia, right. so Western Australia. Um, and there's a port here called Fremantle, and down in Fremantle, there's a microbrewery called Little Creatures, hmm. and they do quite a lot of nice beers. Um, but my favourite is a beer called Rogers, as in the name Roger, um, and that's um, a really tasty beer, which I think you guys would like, based really? on a few of the beers I've watched you. I so think I heard someone speaking. Rogers about. out of Little Creatures in Perth. Did I get that right? Yeah. I can send you a, a link to it. I would appreciate that. We've got a shop locally that tries to pull in a couple, you know, not just general international beers, but the kind of more uh, interesting or harder to find ones. And I will deliberately look for that and give pass that on to him and see if he can acquire some. Yeah. Great stuff. I posted the link to their website on um, on the chat for you. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, sir. And appreciate you joining in and for the question. And before we wrap, uh, Lynn followed up and said you can link directly to Amazon from Facebook, but she believes it only works for the big names, which makes sense. I, yeah, I think she means works by it's only something that would be worthwhile uh, for them. So, yeah, they probably don't have quite the same sort of webmaster guidelines that the friends at the Google do. Not surprised. But now I'm curious. I, I, 
I'm sure they have some limits. I just don't know what they are offhand, and, and I'll have to go look that up. Hmm. And uh, yes, Lynn also says that Australia has great wine, and she's a wine lover, and you can still hang out here, Lynn, anytime. You had many wine drinkers on the show. Yes. We kind of we, we we might laugh at you a little bit after we hang up, but just. A little. <clears throat> All right. So Carl, thanks very much for joining. Jeff, have a fantastic evening. Everyone else watching, we will see the rest of all y'all, as we say, next week. Yep. Cheers. Cheers.